Well, hello, every hello everyone. <laughs> Welcome inside the Detroit <laughs> Athletic Club. We're a little tongue-tied because we are so excited for what is going to take place this evening. Welcome to the pre-party for the DAC Foundation's High School Male and Female Athlete of the Year Awards. My name is Lauren Plant, and you are Sydney Carriel. And like you said, we're just we've been waiting all day for this, so yes. we're we're just ready to get this thing going and meet our 12 nominees. I mean, absolutely incredible student athletes all around. No doubt, we've been doing a lot of work over the past uh, month and a half in preparing all of the videos and uh, just getting everything ready for this night because it's really a big night. This is, uh, you know, for a lot of these athletes, it's kind of their last go around in high school. Uh, it's all very exciting. We've got some exciting things planned. And this show is just a, we're going to introduce you to each of our nominees. Uh, and we're going to talk to them for a little bit. And we have something very special uh, because uh, not only every year, very generously, does President's Tuxedo uh, serve the tuxedos for the men, but this year's Somerset Collection was very generous in providing stylists and styling all of our female nominees. So we're actually just like if you're watching, uh, you know, one of the award show <laughs> uh, pre-parties, yeah. we're getting an opportunity to say, hey, what are you wearing? Yeah, yeah, and you should see the females look incredible. Yeah. They did a great job, and not only do they look really good, but it also fits their personalities as well. So we'll dive into all of that once we get our nominees out here. Yeah, and we're going to do that very shortly here. So again, uh, you know, shout out to the State Champs crew, all the work that's done to do this. This show, beginning at 7 p.m., the awards will be live. So whether you're on the State Champs Michigan Facebook or the YouTube page or the website, uh, check it out. Uh, it will be live. It will be archived after that at DACAthleteoftheyear.com, which is the website for where all the awards and nominees and, and all of the information is held. So without any further ado, we're going to introduce you to the first set of our nominees. We're going to bring both a male and female out. So uh, first up, let's uh, bring out uh, two of them here. <laughs> Yay! And then we'll bring Jared. out the stylist oh, so as well. So we're going to do that. Let me uh, let me start with the gentleman here, uh, and that is Mr. Zane Forrest and uh, Zane from uh, Carson City Crystal High School. And uh, again, you know, uh, this is an exciting time. Uh, congratulations, man, for everything you've been able to achieve in your career thus far. Yeah, thank you. It's an honor to be here. Yeah. Super excited. So uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, he is a thrower. Uh, in the track and field game, he is one who is uh, a shot put, a discus thrower, and uh, he's one of the best in the country, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm saying that because it's true. He actually has uh, been uh, crowned the national champion for having the, the farthest throw, and you just had another, we had the track and field state finals this weekend. You had a big weekend. Yeah, a small PR in the shot put and a nice throw in the discus and got the win, so it was really awesome. Absolutely, set meet records in both of them, in both the discus and the shot put, so he was able to uh, be crowned state champion uh, once again. So thank you so much for being here. It's going to be a fun night. We'll be, we've got a nice story that we did on Zane, so you'll be checking that out. And who do you have? Oh, I've got two lovely people here. Congratulations, Zane, again. First, we're going to start with our stylist, Marianne. Will you tell us a little bit about what you do? Hi, good evening everyone, and I'm a stylist for the Somerset Collection, so I work with all the stores at the Somerset Collection, and I style individuals um, for special occasions such as this, uh, for even for everyday clothes, working people, um, athletes like these kids. So, um, yeah. Yeah, and we had a lot of fun doing this. So our first athlete we have here is Bridget Bozar from Plymouth High School, a state champion in golf, all the works. How does it feel to be here? I'm so excited. I've been looking forward to this for weeks now, and it's really great to have my family and my coaches here. Yeah, so you guys helped style Bridget. What went into the styling here? It's so beautiful. So for Bridget, when I met Bridget, I first saw a picture of Bridget. I noticed how she had absolutely beautiful coloring, and I knew she would look incredible in metallics. So we found her a metallic dress at Macy's, and we um, decided to accentuate that with hair back and a beautiful silver bracelet to go with it. So um, we just knew that would highlight Bridget's natural coloring and beautiful athletic physique. Yes. So awesome. Fantastic. Thank you so much. She looks great. I love it. Beautiful Bridget. Yeah. <laughs> so a little bit about you and for you for those of you who don't know, you are one of the best golfers in the state. You broke a ton of records for your school. What was this final year like for you? 
Oh, it was very exciting. I mean, I knew going in as a senior that it would be a lot of fun. I knew all my teammates going in, and I had a lot of experience from the past few years. So overall, I just tried to have a lot of fun this year. Yeah, and you also, you have a twin sister, and you guys are up next going to Oakland University to both play golf there. How exciting is that for both of you? Oh, we're very excited. We're already rooming together, and we've got that all set up. So uh, we're coordinating all of our dorm stuff right now, and it's great going in, especially having a twin, like someone that I can room with and trust. Yeah, yeah, awesome. And when we see Bridget's story, we're going to learn a little bit more about the family affair of golf we have going on in the Bozar family. So thank you so much for joining us, and congratulations again. Thank you. All right, thank you both. You can uh, step off. We'll invite uh, two more of our nominees if they happen to be here. Uh, Send them on in. We're a live show, so uh, <laughs> this is uh, yeah. this is how it works. So that was uh, a beautiful but I dress. Will, yeah, it really was. Yeah, and, and I would say that everybody has great individual style, and uh, I think it's wonderful. And I hope we can do this year in year out. And uh, I know for the guys, it's you know it's just kind of the basic tuxedo yeah. look. You know, <laughs> they don't get all the the cool but stuff us females get. Quite as much fun. We've oh been, yeah, we've been no. Do, we've been doing these awards for a long time, and the fact that you know the females now get the individual uh, attention uh, that they're getting is is phenomenal. Oh, so yeah. we're really excited about that. Definitely. So come on down. All right, hello, Avery right. Brazar. You look gorgeous, Thank as always. You. This is Ava Broussard, volleyball player from Marianne Hi. High School. Miss volleyball this year. Absolutely killing it. And Marianne, so how did we style our lovely Ava here? <laughs> so Ava was styled by one of our stylists, Tamala Clark, who is not with us this evening, but she is wearing the beautiful color of red mm -hmm. that really just pops her coloring and we have accentuated with some little hair barrettes and a little silver yes. bracelet. Yes. And um, it really, really shows off her also beautiful physique, her nice broad shoulders. Um, the cut and the ruffles fit her fun and bubbly personality. Yes, I so, that. yes. <laughs> so, yes. So, congratulations you. on all your success. This was like so much fun. I felt like I was getting styled for the Oscars or the Met Gala. Yeah, right. I'm like, oh my gosh, I feel That's so special. What made you want to pick this people. outfit? What went into your picking here? Well, red's my favorite color, and I'm going to NC State, which is also uh, red. So they ask you, right. they ask you, what's your what's your favorite color? I'm like red, and then they just pulled this off the rack. I'm like, okay, if this fits, like this is the one, and I nice. put it on perfect fit. I'm like, okay, we're done then. Yeah. It was literally the third dress we pulled <laughs> off. Like I tried on two others before. I'm like, okay. This is perfect. This is it. Love at first sight. That's how it went. Yes, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> well, speaking of you a little bit with your whole volleyball career, I mean, what does this moment being, mean to you being here at the DAC Athlete of the Year Awards? It is just so special. I mean, there's incredible athletes um, that were also nominated, both male and female. So just to, like, get to mingle with them, meet their families, it's just so special. And the DAC is so coveted, and it's just a beautiful organization. So to be recognized is just so it's amazing. We're going to hear a little bit more about you later, but I want to brag about you real quick. Back-to-back mm -hmm. -back Gatorade Player of the Year and Miss Volleyball. I mean, well, you're just incredible. Yeah. Thank you. What did it mean to you to win back-to-back -back, uh, Gatorade Player of the Year? It meant everything. I mean, there's so many amazing volleyball players currently in the state of Michigan and in the past to be on that list with all those girls and to have your name just solidified in history is incredibly special and it humbles me so much to just be up there with them. and. Uh, plus the opportunity to donate the money that they give you. They give you $1,000 to donate to a charity of your choice. So I got to give that to Special Olympics Michigan. So to go out and reach out to more than just my sport is just, it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. That is awesome. And that was a teaser for your story. We'll find yes. out why she gave it to the Thank Special you. Olympics. Yes. Yeah, I thought you were going to blow it. I was like, no. Oh, I'm yeah. just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We've got yeah, a spoiler exactly. alert here. <laughs> well, thank you, Ava, so much, yeah. and congratulations yeah, again. again. Congratulations. All right. Who do we have next? Come on down. I feel we can't see because we just have the bright lights here. So, <laughs> all right. So, another female candidate for Athlete of the Year. Take all it right. away. All right. Abby Vandercoy. We are here. She is an incredible cross-country runner and also track and field. We can't forget about that. She She's just so fast. You're just a fast runner all around. But, Abby, thanks for being here. And how excited are you? The day's finally here. It, it's really fun. It's such a huge honor to be here. And 
Yeah, I'm just so thankful for it. And you got styled in a beautiful pink yeah. dress, my favorite yeah. color. Marianne, what went into styling Abby here? So when I met Abby, the first thing I noticed is her beautiful clear green eyes and her porcelain skin. And porcelain skin is um, just a wonderful backdrop for, uh, for color. So we thought we would put Abby in a beautiful pop of pink. And we um, accentuated with gold jewelry, which uh, brings out her natural undertones, warm undertones. So, yeah, when you were shopping, were you going for a bright color? Or what were you thinking? Yeah, I'm normally like more sparkly and stuff, and the more color, the better. So, yeah, yeah I like that. I'm right there with you. I think we are both right there with you on that. So, let's talk about you really quick before we'll see your whole story later. Yeah. But with cross country, I mean, you capped it off with the state title and track this weekend. What did that moment mean to you on Saturday? It was awesome. I went into that race um, not for myself, uh, for, for the team. And like this whole season, I haven't necessarily focused on opportunities to go fast. It's more about all about the team. Yeah. So, I I believe the whole season we had potential to win the state, and not many people did. But I was like, you know, I I really think we can. So Saturday. I went into it being like, I'm doing four events, and um, maybe scratching the 800 if we're doing bad, then I wouldn't, but my friends, Maddie and Kyla, I randomly got them to join the track team um, this year, and they did well, so we had a chance to win, and um, I did the 800. If I wouldn't have done it, we wouldn't have, we would have lost, so, and obviously it fluctuates, if someone else wouldn't have right. done as well, but <clears throat> no, it was, it was awesome. Huge moment. Awesome. Awesome. And you're going to GBSU, so we'll hear why and all of that later today. I don't want to spoil it yet. Yeah. So congratulations. And, and that was the first track title, am yeah. I correct, for in Western my, Michigan Christian? Yes, in my senior year, we, before this, we had never won right. a women's state championship right. team. And in my senior year, we got two. That's so outstanding. That That's that. outstanding. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> all right. Okay. All right. Well, let's welcome this gentleman here. And uh, today, Brock is styled in a tuck. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, can't do that. But, I was uh, like, wow, all right, right, we're no, getting no, into no, it. Exactly. No, exactly. So I just, you know, I'm trying to get in the spirit of things. But this is Brock Porter, Orchard Lake St. Mary's, uh, uh, fireball phenom, one of the best pitchers uh, in the country. And uh, we're going to, you know, when we show his story later, you'll, you'll see a, a, a lot of why he is uh, somebody who is considered one of the best in the country. We're so blessed here in Michigan. You know, we've got athletes like Zane Forrest, athletes like yourself, and others who, you know, are not just, you know, phenomenal in their sport here, you know, in, in Michigan, but, uh, you know, across the thing. And we talked about it when we had our stories, the fact that, you know, I think a lot of people need to start giving Michigan a little bit more credit. Yeah, I totally agree. I think, you know, playing down south, I think all those kids down there think that they're the best, and uh, the Midwest has just as good as kids, if not better. And we, I made sure I put that in the story as well. Uh, but, you know, this is, this is it for you guys. Uh, you know, baseball is one of the sports that's still going on. So they uh, just got a few weeks left in the season. Uh, obviously, you guys are going for your third straight state championship. If we did not have a COVID year, this could be four uh, for you guys. But uh, just the opportunity right now, uh, because you've got bigger things that, that you'll be on your plate very shortly, but this last go around with this group, these boys, I mean, how much fun are you having? Yeah, it's been an absolute bat blast, and uh, we're trying to go, you know, undefeated right now. We're 39 and 0, I think, and um, it would just be amazing to cap it off with an undefeated season with a state championship. Yeah, no doubt, and uh, if I'm right, I think we're at what 60 in a row. Yeah, I think so. So, I mean, it's amazing what Orchard Lake is doing as a program. Uh, and this guy has been, uh, you know, since your freshman year, uh, somebody who had an opportunity to win a state championship as a freshman and now as a senior uh, trying to, do, uh, you know, close it out. And all the accolades will be coming. So congratulations. We'll see your story later on. But, uh, again, uh, you deserve all of it. So congrats. Thank you very much. Okay, you got it. All right. All right, now got? over to this side. We yes. actually have someone who won the state championship as a freshman and That's then right. went on to do it as a senior. How about that? We're here with Ruby Whitehorn, who is this year's Miss Basketball and earned McDonald's All-American. Ruby, I mean, cap it all off on senior <laughs> year. <laughs> How are you feeling right now? I'm uh, really excited to have ended my senior year like that. It was a really good experience. Yeah, mm -hmm. I bet so. And we're going to hear more about your entire journey mm -hmm. at Detroit Edison. But first, we got to know the stylings of Ruby Whitehorn. Yeah. <laughs> So Ruby was also styled by Tamala Clark yeah. from Somerset Collection. And Ruby, um, correct me if I get this wrong, Ruby, but you wanted something maybe not quite so traditional to be dressed in for tonight. Is that right? Yeah. So uh, Tamala <laughs> found her this absolutely beautiful suit in this beautiful color um, that really highlights your natural beauty. So 
Yeah, yeah I was going to say, I love that color. It looks so great. And also your necklace. We talked about it a little bit, but will you tell everybody else a little bit more about the number two on your necklace? Yeah, my um, number two, I just, I never take it off on the back of it. It says mm-hmm. trust the process, which basically explains my whole career. I just had to trust in myself and my teammates and my coaches that my time was coming because, you know, I played up under a lot of great players. And so mm-hmm. I just had to keep reminding myself to trust the process and it paid off. Yeah. And I remember when we did your interview, all of your awards didn't even fit on the table. There's so, so much going on here. So if you could pinpoint one award that you got in your entire career before heading off to Clemson, by the way, what would be your most finest moment? Uh, winning the state championship would definitely be my, my um, the award that I'm most proud of because I did it with my team. And it's like, it's not an individual award. It's an award for all of us. And they really worked for that. I wouldn't have none of my individual awards if not for my teammates. Awesome stuff. And we'll hear more from Ruby later today. But congratulations on an incredible career. We're looking forward to seeing you play at Clemson. I'm excited yeah. for that. And you know what? Brock is going to Clemson. So oh. he was just here. He's, he stepped off. But, yeah, a couple Clemson uh, recruits. So uh, congratulations. All right. Good Thanks, deal. Ruby. We'll come on in. We've got another gentleman here. His name is Mert Oral. He is the best tennis player in the state. And uh, he represents Ann Arbor Green Hill School in Ann Arbor. And uh, he has the great distinction of uh, being a three-time state champion, correct? Or four-time state, I'm sorry, four-time, three-time in one singles, but he was a four-time state champion. So every year he won the state championship. And uh, yeah, come on, come on over. It's all good, come on over. Uh, We're having a great time here as uh, just to kind of reset the table here just so you guys know this is our live pre-party uh, for the DAC Foundation's Male and Female High School Athlete of the Year Awards. They will start at uh, on about 35 minutes or so and so we're just kind of getting a chance to uh, get to know the nominees a little bit uh, just doing our own uh, version of the E uh, red carpet thing. I'm Ryan Seacrest here and uh, you know <laughs> but uh, no we're having a great time we're getting a chance just to meet them and uh, again this is their big night and uh, you know one of the things that uh, uh, we'll say when you know we actually have the awards is that you know regardless of who is named quote unquote the winner at the end of the night these athletes are all uh, so outstanding in their own right they're winners in every sense of the word and their accomplishments are amazing and this gentleman is uh, is somebody who is astounds me and again we had a great interview you know I really enjoyed our conversation uh, he is a lot a deeper person than just tennis uh, and you've been an entrepreneur and uh, you know you obviously have um, you know a huge uh, academic uh, mind and um, and the great thing that I thought was really fun and you really um, were uh, you know so forth why uh, forth coming of telling me how much and that's your Turkish heritage you know and uh, I made sure I put a little bit in the story that we're going to see it doesn't really do it justice but um, you know for you know your your parents came here uh, for medical school they stayed and uh, and you have obviously you know a great family that is there that you've been able to visit over the course uh, of your life and and just kind of talk about uh, the family and what means to you. Yeah, uh, I mean, I think my family means everything to me. I mean, my parents, despite living in the States for, I don't know, probably close to 30 or so years now, I mean, they've never lost uh, their connection with their Turkish heritage and that that, uh, cultural identity. And uh, we have a really tight-knit family, really close relationship with all of our extended family, me and my older brother, uh, with our grandparents on both sides, cousin, aunts, uncles, and our parents have done a really good job of making sure that we stay in touch with them and making sure we get the experience of visiting Turkey once, twice, sometimes even three times a year to just be able to maintain that cultural identity for ourselves and that close connection with our family. You know, and it's important too to know that, uh, you know, Mert would have had a lot of opportunities, you know, on the national level to go and do a lot of things that a lot of high level players do in sports such as tennis, uh, but because of his connection to family and uh, because, you know, he wanted to be able to to travel and, and, and be with them as much as you can you know you you stuck to high school you did some events but you have no regrets no regrets whatsoever wouldn't have done it any other way absolutely and he's going to Michigan he's the first uh, player from Green Hill School I think since 79 yeah. to uh, to go play tennis at Michigan so we're really excited uh, about his future and um, just a great career uh, congratulations on everything that you've been able to accomplish uh, he actually created uh, fitness with Mert and uh, he actually sold Mert Merchandise, if you know what he's saying, and he had shirts and everything made up and uh, sold a lot of them. So this guy's going to be, um, I don't know, maybe he'll come and buy state champs someday I don't know, or something. But, but again, congratulations. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. You're welcome.
You are welcome. All right, well, we're over here now with Maya Pedicord, yeah, and yeah. she actually has her own clothing line as well and is an entrepreneur herself. So what got you into Rashawn. starting this and getting getting yourself into this kind of business of creating your own clothes and shoes? Um, really, my dad got me started with everything. Um, he really just told, taught me how to be very, like, independent. So me, myself, like, I like being independent also. So I feel like being an entrepreneur was one of the big things I really wanted to do, was just building my own brand and making a name for myself. Yeah. She's mm -hmm. also making a name for herself on the basketball court. She is a star basketball player in the state of Michigan and not only ranked top in the state, but also in the nation on ESPN's class of 2022 recruiting class. So you, you're top notch all around, but yeah. we also want to hear about your top notch outfit right yeah. now. So Marianne, will you tell us a little bit about Maya's outfit? Yes, yeah, so Maya is wearing a jumpsuit tonight and this was from Nordstrom and we have accentuated it with silver jewelry. And if you notice the earring shape with the point uh, accentuates the point in Maya's face shape and looks just stunning, it's so complimentary. And the little mm. twist near the neckline accentuates her pretty face. So, um, so anyway, Maya, yeah. congratulations on all your success. Yes. Yeah, that's awesome. So a little bit more about you and your journey to get to the point where you are. You're heading to Texas A&M. If you were to go back on your four years, what, what was it all like for you? Um, it was a journey. Like, it, <laughs> it was a long experience, like, as dealing with basketball, it was it took a lot of practice hard work um just a lot of obstacles i had to get over um in high school i had to start being a leader more um just get my teammates involved with everything just talking to them about life and basketball so me just growing as a person helped me with everything um these last four years so Right, and not only that, capped off senior year with a state championship. Mm -hmm. What was that moment like for you? The clock hit triple zeros. Now there's a couple tears in your eyes. What was all that like? It was amazing. Um, that was my goal since freshman mm -hmm. year. So um, just having a state championship meant everything to me and my coaches and my teammates. So that was really amazing to me. So that was my goal. So I got to that. Yeah. Now headed to Texas A&M. A, &A, a little warmer weather year round, which is great. Yeah. We, we love that. How excited are you for that next chapter? Um, I'm very excited. Um, we already um, went down to campus last week, so oh, just awesome. getting the feel for it was good for me. Um, I'm doing summer school now, so just getting the feel for everything. Um, I'm very excited about the journey. Yeah. We're excited to watch you yeah. grow and excel in the college level. So thank you so much, and congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Yep, congratulations. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. Now we have the oldest high school athlete in the nation uh, joining us here. Exactly, he still qualifies for the award now. Uh, his name is Sean Moran, and he is the committee chair uh, that puts together this whole DAC Foundation High School Athlete of the Year Awards, and you've been involved with this uh, since its inception. And, you know, every year uh, we're just astounded by the level of talent and, and the people that make up uh, the nominees for this award. It really is a special one that focuses not just on, you know, being an, an excellent athlete, but being a great student, someone who's a leader, somebody who is, you know, working in their community, things of that nature. Um, you know, what keeps you coming back year after year? Because it's a lot of work that goes into doing this. Well, we've got great partnership with you and state champs. That helps a lot. It's actually made the process a lot easier for us is you're uh, intimately well aware of all these kids, and I think that's helped us get more of a statewide exposure instead of just around the metro Detroit area. Uh, the kids bring you back. I mean, it's not – I mean, we all remember the winners, but it's those other ten finalists who we don't remember that bring you back because they were all amazing. Mm -hmm. And as you go back and reflect upon the athletes who haven't won but yet were finalists and what they've done on and off the field, it's amazing. And I'm, and I'm sure um, – you know, my ultimate goal is to be able to turn this over to all the uh, young student athletes as they become members of the DAC after college, come here and run the committee. That's amazing. And we have three people on the committee now who have been finalists or have won the award. So the idea is to uh, keep my excitement energy and the rest of the uh, folks on the selection committee, but one day turn it over to these other past nominees yeah. and have them run it. Yeah. I, I think, think that's a big cool legacy. 
I think that's outstanding. And before I let you go, I do want to, uh, you know, the reason that this thing is able to happen is because of the generous donation support from the DAC Foundation. So for those who, you know, want to learn a little bit about that, if you could just uh, opine a bit on that. Yeah, sure. Uh, well, the Detroit Athletic Club has its own foundation. The DAC Foundation is the 501c3 arm. And one of its chief missions is to support amateur athletics. Uh, obviously, giving scholarship to the highest quality student athletes in the state of Michigan is one way of doing that. So members, through their generosity, corporations, through their generosity, fund the scholarships so that we're able to do this and put this on for these kids and leave it not only with a great night, but some dollars in their pocket to go to college. So thank you for mentioning that. And uh, no, we're, uh, we're excited about the future and really excited about tonight. Absolutely. I, I have one more question. Though. What, what did you? You should address me. Yet. I know. <laughs> I know. People need ne to get me in an outfit. <laughs> yeah. Next year, the next men year. need just to get me. represented. Yeah, right. Okay. So oh, we're we're putting that out you. there on live TV. So thanks, anyway, man. thanks, Sean. Thank Appreciate you. it. Okay. Who do we have? All right. We are here now with Kayla Jackson from Renaissance High School. Who will arguably go down as one of the greatest runners in MHSAA history? No I doubt. Mean, no doubt, you're absolutely yeah. incredible. You just capped off your senior year with four more state titles on Saturday. What was that moment like for you? Um, I was very shocked at what I did. I knew <laughs> it was coming, but I didn't know it would come this soon. So I was just very proud of myself. I don't know if we were shocked, I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> just kidding, I'm just kidding. But Marianne, how did we style Miss Kayla here? She looks gorgeous. So Kayla was also styled by another stylist, um, so Asia helped you. And um, Kayla being a little bit more petite in frame, um, we wanted to kind of keep the focus on um, her beautiful dress and not overwhelm her frame with too much jewelry. And so we kept the look very simple and very sleek to, um, to highlight your natural beauty. You look gorgeous. How did it feel getting all dressed up and everything? Uh, it was very fun. I had a great time picking out everything, and my stylist was very nice. Yeah. Oh, good. I would have had a lot of fun, too. <laughs> but let's talk about you a little bit more here because we have so much to brag about. Your resume is stacked by no means. But, um, you know, you had an incredible career, and you also went to the Junior Olympics and broke some records there. Mm -hmm. What was it like for you traveling around across the country? It was very exciting, especially to have that platform to be able to show everybody what I had. And I would just like to thank God and my parents for allowing me to be able to do everything that I've done so far. Mm -hmm. Up next, University of Georgia. How excited are you for this next chapter? I'm really excited. I get to meet new people, uh, make bonds with a new team, and everything should flow well. We'll learn more about Kayla's incredible story later tonight, but thank you so much and congratulations again on this incredible moment. Thank you. Congratulations. All right, well, we have another one of our male nominees. Come on over here, sir. Uh, we have Riley Ho from Heartland, and boy, I tell you, um, again, the, uh, the hits keep coming because, again, we've got another one of the top athletes in the nation, not just in the state of Michigan. Uh, you had, and I want to ask you uh, right off the bat, um, you know, I thought what was really great about our interview when we chatted is that you talked about that, sure, winning is great, but it's always about, you know, moving yourself forward and, you know, on Saturday, right, 3,200, you know, shock the world, Riley O doesn't win the 3,200, uh, and it was super close, um, but, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that you, you pull something from that, and you're probably just as happy for the young man that won. Yeah, um, I was, I mean, at the end of that 3200, we were both winded, it's like hard to talk, but honestly, it was really fun with him, and I was honestly happy for him and everything, and like, I gave it my all, he gave it his all, that's all that you could ever ask for. Absolutely, so you did win the 1600, which is your first state title in that event, and so that was outstanding, that's the mile. Uh, to you and me, and uh, in cross country, uh, he was a uh, you know back-to-back -back state champion in cross country, and you went to nationally. You went to the uh, what used to be called the Foot Locker Nationals. You went to what's called the East Bay Nationals in San Diego. You went ahead, and I do highlight this in your story, um, but uh, you were able to pull that off, and and just um, you know real quickly uh, what it was like to uh, you know. I, again, I don't think a lot of – it's funny because I was listening to some of the play-by-play, -play and I don't think they really counted on you, you know, being there at the end and all of a sudden you were. I mean, just describe that experience. Um, honestly, there's it was like an experience like no other. It was just amazing to be there around all these really talented people, and then even to be able to win it is just like – it was really an honor to be able to do something like that. 
It was, and you represented Michigan great. He is headed off to Michigan State, and uh, you got to be super pumped. Yeah, I definitely am. I mean, I know some of them, so it will, I'll already have that instant connection with them, and then also meeting the new people. That will be also amazing. So Spartans are represented here at the DAC Foundation's Male and Female High School Athlete of the Year Awards. Congratulations. We'll see you inside. Thank you. Okay. All right. Oh, great. All right. We have another male finalist here. Well, Jacob Gonzalez, come on over. He represents Holly High School. And um, uh, congratulations, man, on being here. And, um, you know, I thought one of the great things uh, about talking to you and learning more about you is, um, you know, wrestling, wrestling is his sport. And uh, he was a three-time state champion, something that um, your brother, what's that? Oh, well, me. Okay, sorry. No, it's all right. Yeah, it's good. Uh, no, it's all right. We're live. It's all good. We'll make sure we get the shot right. Uh, is that you as a three-time city champ, you were able, your brother, you have several brothers, big family, uh, but, uh, you know, they were only able to get two. You were able to get three. Uh, just having having those bragging rights, I'm sure, is awesome. But uh, just kind of talk about um, the family of wrestling that you have. Uh, you are really paired with, like, one other partner most of the time. Like, definitely you go into rooms and there's, like, people your size, but it's really growth between like your teammates and especially like for me and my family that like allowed me to get to where I am and it's it's uh I'm really thankful for it and it pushed me to be a better person and especially a better wrestler. You know, it's such an event uh, being at Ford Field for the state finals. It's so big, you know, and so many people there and you know, you've had to go out there time and time again and get it done. What people probably don't realize is it's several days. So you're wrestling several matches against some of the best in the state. And quite often when you get into uh, the final match, you know, Matt, you're off, often going up against somebody who is undefeated, just like you were. And just talk about that moment and what it takes because it's, it literally is inches, you know, that, that separate, you know, champion from runner up. I think it's it's a lot mental, like especially going there my freshman year and not being able to pull out the victory that time. Uh, it you can't to like uh, allow yourself to like get nervous and like you gotta keep yourself calm and like facing the best opponent in the uh, in the state is a big like uh, like obstacle that you have to overcome and it really uh, starts in the practice room. Like I wrestle like with a bunch of college athletes that I know are gonna push me harder than. Hopefully uh, my opponents will, so I know that's going to help me uh, in big matches. One of the things that uh, I love about uh, Jacob is the fact that he's been a three-sport athlete uh, his entire career, football uh, and wrestling and then track and field. Uh, and now, uh, you know, I know that, you know, and I mentioned this uh, in your story, you know, a big thing for you, uh, you were looking at Ivy Leagues uh, as to where you wanted to go, and you've decided on Brown. Why? I decided on, uh, I decided on Brown because – the atmosphere it's known as like one of the happiest ivies and it has open curriculum so uh, i can focus a little bit on wrestling but like really dive into like whatever field i want to and just really like be able to pursue what i want to and like not have anything hold me back well congratulations man uh congratulations on everything and uh i'm glad that you are here and uh really for all the nominees it's just outstanding so all right we'll see you inside Okay, is there anyone left? I think we got all 12. Did we? Yeah. All right, except for one. So we know that Joshua Berman is not here. Oh, so, yes. uh, yep. So let me just uh, talk a little bit about uh, Josh. So, for those who are unfamiliar, uh, Joshua Berman is from Traverse City Central. He won the State Champs Amble Award this year as the number one linebacker in the state. He's also M Live Player of the Year. He was the Gatorade uh, Michigan Football Player of the Year. He was a linebacker and a quarterback. Oh, man. And he so does it all. He does it all. <laughs> what doesn't he do? He exactly. And uh, he was an outstanding athlete. Uh, totally deserves to be here. He enrolled early at the University of Notre Dame. So in fact, uh, his parents are here tonight. And I don't know if they're if they're here. I we probably didn't get them, but I, I was that's okay. Uh, I've already talked to them. Uh, they uh, were moving him into his dorm today, so oh, okay. he was unable to be here. I mean, they're training. You know what it is like if you're college football. That's big time college football. He's a big time college football player, uh, along with Nolan Ziegler from Grand Rapids Catholic Central, who is another uh, Notre Dame uh, commit yeah. who is there. They also, you know, it, it it's one of the things where um, you know they enroll a semester early because yeah. they need to get a head start to be ready. Uh, 
guns are blazing once the football season starts. Hey, yeah, you're taking it to the next level. So yeah. it just happens fast. But, you know, one thing I noticed with a lot of the athletes we just talked to real quick was they all talked about their families and how they couldn't be here without yeah. all of them, not only just their immediate families, but their teammates as well, which is so awesome to see. And the reason why these are 12 incredible athletes, because they're not just worried about themselves. They're worried about everybody else, which is great. I know. So how excited are you for tonight? I'm excited. Let's get yeah. this thing going. We are. So uh, for those of you who know, so the time now is a little, it's about 641. So uh, Eastern Standard Time, wherever you may be watching this, uh, the show will go live at 7 p.m. Uh, again, if you're watching this live now, then just be where you are and uh, make sure you watch the show. Uh, it's um, We're going to be celebrating all 12 nominees. Even Josh wasn't here. We still created a nice story for him, and we'll recognize him. And, um, uh, again, it's so hard. I mean, we don't get the opportunity to choose the actual champion, but being in that room, that has got to be hard. Yeah, I was going to say, can't say I'm jealous of them for having to choose because yeah. as – all of us at State Champs, as we went through the interviews and we got to meet these athletes, I just remember we were all talking. I don't know how they're going to choose yeah. because they, they are all not just in their sport, but also in the classroom. They're both athletic yeah. and academically just great. So all around, I, I know <laughs> it's incredible. nationally ranked. I mean, it's like literally it's uh, it's an impossible decision to make, but one has to be made and there will be a male <laughs> and a female athlete of the year uh, chosen this evening. But again, we celebrate all of them and they are the best of uh, what we have to offer here in yeah. the state of Michigan. And uh, they're all going to do tremendous things at universities all over the country. And I'm not, I wouldn't be surprised for guys like, uh, you know, Riley and Zane and Abby and Kayla that they might be running in an Olympics uh, very shortly. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. All <laughs> yes, very much so. It's Especially what we all just saw last weekend or two days ago, really, yeah. at the state finals. No doubt. They Anything all showed is up. possible. Yeah, they all showed up. And uh, it's going to be outstanding, and we're going to have a great night. So uh, yeah. I think that's it. Yeah. If you, you're ready to go. We're ready this to go. This is Sydney's first go around. So uh, it's great. I get to share the stage with Sydney, and I'm ex super excited. And uh, thank you so much for watching. And this has been the pre party for the DAC Foundation's High School Male and Female Athlete of the Year Awards. Uh, this is State Champ's seventh year that we've been able to put on this production. Uh, I got to give a shout out to all the crew. They're all right behind us right now. You can't see them, but uh, all of them working extremely hard uh, to give you guys the best experience you can. Um, so all we ask is that you follow State Champs, subscribe <laughs> to State Champs, like State Champs, and most importantly, share State Champs so that each and every year, uh, you know, we're not just doing these awards. We're uh, on the fields. We're in the in the field house. We're on the court uh, all year long, all school year long. This fall, we're going to be celebrating our 20th year. Hard to believe. Uh, yes, yeah. at State Champs. And um, just the number of athletes who we've had an opportunity uh, to cover during that time is outstanding. And, and I'd love to put together like a show where we just kind of highlight our top 10, top 15 athletes that we've covered on state champs over the last 20 years. And trust me, it'll knock your socks off. Yeah. And that'll also be hard to choose from though. Oh yeah. We already got 12 incredible right now. Maybe we'll so. get the fans involved yeah. and maybe they can vote, <laughs> take a little of the pressure off of us. Uh, but again, uh, it's real important that you guys do that. If you like state champs, if you like the content, if you want to see more of it, we're here for you all school year long. Uh, we're working our tails off to bring you, again, the best high school sports experience uh, that you can have, and uh, and even in RoboZone and on eSports, too. So we try to give you the entire high school experience. Make sure you follow us, subscribe, share, like. It's real important that you do that, and if you do, we'll keep bringing it to you. So we're going to take a break, and we'll see you guys in about 15 minutes for the DAC Foundation's High School Male and Female Athlete of the Year Award. You won't want to miss it. We'll see you soon. See you soon.